Tennessee Congressman Andy Ogles now introducing two articles of impeachment against Vice President Kamala Harris. I used to criticize the Democrats for um, impeachments to nowhere that just made them look angry and like we were school children who couldn't get along on the playground. And so my, my concern here is um, that that's actually now the way the Republicans look. Now that Vice President Kamala Harris is the presumptive Democratic nominee for the 2024 election, MAGA Republicans in Congress have officially filed articles of impeachment against her, and it's so stupid that even Fox News hosts are calling them out for it. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. No one here should be surprised. No one here should be surprised. MAGA Republicans, particularly in the House of Representatives, are so dysfunctional, stupid, and unproductive that this is the inevitable conclusion of what they would do with their remaining time in the majority of the House of Representatives. We're going to play some clips and unpack it together. Tennessee Congressman Andy Ogles now introducing two articles of impeachment against Vice President Kamala Harris. One article for her role in the border crisis and the other for her misleading the American people about President Biden's physical and cognitive well-being. Joining me now is the man himself, Tennessee Congressman Andy Ogles, a member of the House Financial Services Committee and the House Freedom Caucus. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being Absolutely. with me. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have your articles of impeachment against Kamala Harris. Tell us uh, where this goes next. Well, you know, obviously we're, uh, we have uh, Bibi Netanyahu here today, and then we'll be recessing for much of uh, August and the beginning of September. So there'll be a pause period, and then obviously I'll, I'll push to bring these up. But here's the thing. We have a crisis at the southern border. We are being invaded. Our kids, our streets are being poisoned by fentanyl, and then crime is run rampant. She was the border czar. I'm talking about Kamala Harris. And we have to hold her accountable and start defining her for her failures. Yeah. So there was so much there that's so stupid. This guy, Andy Ogles, is really stupid as well. well. We'll get to him in a minute and what, again, what he likes to do with his time as a sitting Republican congressman who's part of a party that's in control of the House of Representatives. We'll talk about his priorities. But a few things. Number one, contacts at the southern border have actually precipitously dropped because President Biden took executive action, which may or may not be overturned by the courts, because there was a bipartisan, relatively conservative border bill that was endorsed by the anti-Biden Border Patrol Union bill. And it was drafted by one of the most conservative members of the United States Senate, James Langford. It was endorsed by Kirsten Sinema and also a Democrat as well, uh, Chris Murphy. This was a bipartisan, again, relatively conservative border bill. And it was popular, except that MAGA Republicans killed it because Donald Trump publicly and privately said that he didn't want a solution at the southern border because he wanted to use it as a wedge issue uh, for the upcoming election. So again, Republicans objectively behaved in bad faith. Morally, they are culpable for this issue, and it's up to Democrats to make it uh, an election issue against them. President Biden took executive action. Border uh, contacts have dropped precipitously. Situation with fentanyl, I'll remind you because I brought this up in previous videos. We have high-tech, state-of-the-art fentanyl detecting devices that are currently being mothballed because MAGA Republicans will not allow the funding for them to be deployed. So again, as far as the drug situation from the southern border, that again morally is because of MAGA Republicans because they'd rather let Americans die than potentially give President Biden a political victory in 2024. So, again, you see where their priorities are. Um, a lot of bad faith, obviously. And again, we'll, I, we will get to um, what uh, Andy Ogle's priorities are. But I do want you to see how a Fox News analyst responded to Andy Ogle's official filing of articles of impeachment. This is what they had to say. The others may not be as obvious to people out there. Having said all of that, Adam Johnson, you're still uncomfortable with articles of impeachment, aren't you? I am, Maria, and I tell you why. I used to criticize the Democrats for um, impeachments to nowhere that just made them look angry and like we were school children who couldn't get along on the playground. And so my, my concern here is um, that that's actually now the way the Republicans look. And, and I, I wish we wouldn't necessarily pursue impeachments that are never going to produce anything. Congressman, final word. Well, I would say, you know, in that moment when Donald Trump was shot, he paused, he raised his hand, and he made a fist, and he said, I'm going to fight for this country. I'm going to fight for you. That's what this does. We're laying out a case as to why Kamala Harris isn't going to fight for the middle class. She's here to destroy it, and we're going to fight for this country. Andy yeah, this guy is really stupid and dishonest and bad faith. He's just openly admitting that this is a political prop to try to help Donald Trump 
in the upcoming election, that it's not really a good faith effort to hold the vice president accountable for what the constitutional parameters are for an impeachment, treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. He's like, listen, yeah, okay, this is a bad faith uh, effort to politicize impeachment, but Donald Trump held up his fist after an assassination attempt and said, fight, fight, fight. So we're this is what we're doing. We're fighting Kamala Harris by showing that she's not good for the country. That has nothing to do with impeachment. You don't impeach somebody because they're not good for the country. Treason, bribery, high crimes, and other misdemeanors. So again, a transparent political ploy. It's not the first time, though, Andy Ogles has done this. Again, a profoundly stupid and unproductive MAGA Republican congressman whose party is in the majority in the House of Representatives. They have power. They could work bipartisanly with President Biden and the Democrats in good faith to pass common sense bipartisan legislation, but they won't do that. Instead, Andy Ogles was famous earlier in the year because as a member of the party in the majority of the House, in the least productive iteration of Congress since MAGA Republicans took the majority, it's the least productive iteration of Congress in American history. Again, 100% because of them, because they can't even pass their own legislation internally on a partisan basis. They constantly, you know, for the Freedom Caucus Republicans and the so-called Main Street Republicans constantly trip over themselves uh, to high-profile embarrassments. But Andy Ogles, back in April, sponsored legislation to rename Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C. after Donald Trump. That was his legislative priority. And even Newsmax was kind of like, this is kind of weird. You don't really have the margins for it. It's not going to make it into the Senate. Why are you doing this? This is how Andy Ogles cultishly pitched spending time, effort, and energy to rename an airport after his cult leader. This is how he characterized it. So you don't really have, you've got a one vote margin. Is, do right. you think this would even pass in the House if it went to the floor for a vote? Well, you know, there's there's one way to find out. Let's put it out there, baby. And let's go. I mean, you, 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 you don't fight. Uh, you don't stop fighting because the odds are tough. But I think it can pass. Now, look, I don't think the Senate would take it up, but uh, that's on them, not us. You know, we have an obligation to do our jobs. And part of that is to honor the former president and to set the stage. He says that he has to do his job, that MAGA Republican Congress people have to do their job. And he says that the paramount duty of his job is to honor Donald Trump. That would be gross and weird enough to hear out of any politician with respect to the sitting president. I would feel uncomfortable if Democrats said, hey, listen, yeah, I know we're not getting a lot of stuff done, but I want to rename this particular thing after President Biden because part of our job is to honor the president. That would be gross. And I say that as somebody who thinks that President Biden's been a pretty good president and has an outspoken Democrat. It's even grosser to hear it from a MAGA Republican saying that their duty is to honor a former president. It's bad enough if it's a sitting president, but Donald Trump isn't the sitting president. Your job, Congressman, is to produce material benefit for your constituents and for America as a whole. And that includes your liberal constituents as well. But you're not doing that because, again, you're too stupid and dysfunctional to get anything done because you're part of a cult. Super pathetic. And by the way, this guy should be mocked relentlessly in public from now until he chooses to resign in disgrace, which will hopefully be very soon. Now, again, this goes to show what the legislative priorities of the MAGA Republicans are. They also, in addition to filing articles of impeachment against Vice President Harris, also convened an emergency resolution to condemn her. It's a separate thing, but kind of in parallel. And Democratic Congressman Jim McGovern um, kind of roasted them and gave a couple of fact checks, uh, which also tie into what Andy Ogles had to say about this idea that, you know, President Biden made the vice president the quote unquote border czar. So we're going to play some of these clips and unpack it together. This is an emergency meeting. You heard that right, everybody. This is an emergency. Not an emergency meeting to fix the border, but an emergency meeting to bash Kamala Harris. That's the emergency. Are you kidding me? The emergency is that Donald Trump is losing and they're in a panic. And he's so unpopular that they need a meaningless resolution to try to prop him up. Now, I, I get why he's unpopular. Maybe they should call on him to step aside considering how rambling and unfocused and boring he's become. He's the oldest presidential nominee in history. And I'm hearing from a lot of people he should step down. Again, I'll remind you, it's really good that Democrats are weaponizing this uh, critique of President Biden against Donald Trump because Donald Trump was also vulnerable on this issue. Again, polls show reliably that anywhere from half 
50% of the country to 60 to 65% of the country, again, depending on the poll, have doubts about Donald Trump's age and mental fitness to be president. There is no such poll about Vice President Kamala Harris. And so this is a vulnerability which is unique to Trump now that President Biden is no longer running for re-election. And Democrats should relentlessly and mercilessly exploit that to their advantage and give Republicans a taste of their own medicine. Here's McGovern again speaking and fact-checking the Republicans bringing this ridiculous resolution on the claims that the vice president was President Biden's border czar. I, I keep on hearing border czar. How Russian? Uh, but it seems very appropriate uh, coming from my Republican friends. But um, the very first sentence here uh, says, whereas on March 24th, 2021, President Biden asked Vice President Kamala Harris to serve as the administration's border czar. Uh, Mr. Guest, where, he didn't do that. Where, where did you get that from? Did you make it up? Is it? This is not a true statement. So wh wh why is it in the resolution? I mean, I think clearly she's been referred to throughout media as the board is no, well, And so while that may not have been the official no, language you, you, that you, he you was have referred to that, but I, but, and maybe extreme right wing media might have, but that's not what she was appointed to do. And she wasn't. She was appointed to basically be the president's representative to Mexico and some other Latin America countries. Um, they, she was not responsible for, quote unquote, securing the border or being the border czar. So again, that also goes back to what Andy Ogles was talking about, um, just bad faith and dishonesty coming from the Republican Party. But folks, there you have it. The MAGA Republicans who control the House of Representatives and who constantly fail to pass even you know, separate resolutions and separate funding bills and individual spending packages, even within their own conference. The same MAGA majority, which has tried and failed to impeach President Biden as part of that failed sham Biden impeachment inquiry, the MAGA Republicans who, you know, took them 15 attempts to elect their own speaker, and then they kicked him out eight months later in an ignominious display, and then they tried and failed to elect another speaker, and then they finally got Mike Johnson. And again, the consequence of this is that it is the least productive iteration of Congress exclusively, 100%, not 99.9%, 100% because of their stupidity and their dysfunction and their inability and disinterest in governing. What they're doing now is now that they recognize that Joe Biden will not be their opponent in November, and now it's Vice President Kamala Harris, they are filing articles of impeachment against her that are so stupid and so ridiculous, they're even being called out for it by Fox News hosts live on air. Ridiculous, but predictable. Let me know what you think in the comments.